Hello everybody um, and welcome to this uh, webinar. In the next 10 minutes I'm going to describe um, in very short form a project that we completed last year um, called Outcomes Important for Patients, Public and Practitioners. So these are outcomes for systematic reviews, uh, important for patients and the public. They were patients in the public inside Cochrane and outside Cochrane. And practitioners was a word we used to encompass all types of health professionals from doctors and nurses through to physiotherapists, etc. The project was funded by UK Cochrane. And the premise was, what can we do to involve people in developing outcomes for systematic reviews um, in different ways that doesn't cost a lot of money? So this wasn't a hugely uh, expensive project. The actual idea was to see what we could do with not a lot of resources at our fingertips. The cartoon on the left of this slide is a visual representation of the project that was drawn following our presentation at a Cochrane meeting in Ireland in 2015, where we presented some early results. And I really like it, so I thought I'd put it on the slide. So the next slide then is one of my favorite quotes. It's old, it's from The Lancet, uh, over 20 years ago now. And I think it tells us something about the tensions in outcomes development, not just for systematic reviews, but generally for research. Sometimes we measure things because we can, rather than because they matter to people. And I think it's a tremendous challenge to um, find ways to work with people to develop outcomes that everybody can feel are important uh, in a way that is robust uh, and evidence-based. We have to be sure that what we're measuring is, is done in, a, in as best way as possible. And I guess the important sort of um, idea behind this project was how could we do that with uh, review groups? So I'm just gonna take you briefly through the methods. Um, and you'll see from the next slide, I'm going to work from the left of the slide to the right of the slide. Initially, you'll see then this was three pilots within one project. So we were working with three different review groups on three different disease areas. And we also used three different methods to involve people in outcomes development. So we were really giving ourselves quite a challenge on this project, but we thought we would, uh, it was, we'd go, we'd go for broke as it were. So I'll move from the left to the right. So the first pilot within this project was working with the uh, Airways Group, um, Cochrane Airways Group on asthma. And the key method we used for this was a face-to-face -face workshop. And this review group had never done a workshop uh, to our knowledge uh, before. So this was a new method for them. We were also very lucky uh, about a month before the workshop, we were contacted by the key partner, which was Asthma UK, which is the main patient group, um, group for people with asthma in the UK. And they offered us the opportunity to run a Facebook survey, which we did um, a few weeks before the workshop. And that yielded some very helpful information, which I'll talk about in a minute. So the first pilot then on the left was a face-to-face -face workshop. In itself, it wasn't uh, anything particularly novel except it was highly participatory. In other words, there were no presentations. It was all discussion, writing, voting. And uh, we used different materials and resources to help people express what they felt about outcomes in asthma. The next pilot, which is the column in the middle of the slide, was using an online survey. And we did that with the ENT um, ear, nose and throat disorders group. Now they were interested in chronic rhinosinusitis. I'm going to call it sinusitis from now on for ease of um, uh, description. It's a very common condition and it's actually miserable for people that have got it. And there's a limited range of treatments available. So they were keen to find out 
what people who have this condition felt about outcomes and also professionals working in this area. Again, nothing um, radical about this approach. It was a standard SurveyMonkey uh, software we used. We didn't have a patient group. We had professional networks we could um, exploit. We didn't have a patient group. So we had to use uh, social media and what's called snowballing, which is a technique where you let something roll and encourage people to share it with their friends and family and networks and it, it gathers at a pace. So we use snowballing as a technique and we extensively used Facebook and Twitter and email as a way of communicating with people. The survey was very simple, we piloted it. The most difficult thing about the survey was actually describing what an outcome was in a systematic review, which was interesting. We offered um, incentives for people to take part in the survey. There were vouchers on offer and we developed a communication strategy for the social media, which is, was in itself an interesting exercise. At the end, um, we compared the results from the survey with outcomes that are used currently in Cochrane reviews for sinusitis. And then finally on the right hand side, we did something completely different. We were working here with the pregnancy and childbirth group and the topic was breastfeeding. And this is a, a significant part of their portfolio of reviews and they were interested in exploring this. Um, now, here we didn't have any contact with any women breastfeeding at that moment or recalling their history of breastfeeding. What we did was we went to existing experiential data, which is available online via something called Health Talk. Some of you may be aware of this resource. Um, and it's a repository, an internet repository of patient experiences on lots of different topics, cancer, um, being hospitalized, and also across different communities. So they actually produce um, libraries of patient experiences for different communities of interest, such as young people. It's a fantastic resource. And we knew they had a very detailed module on breastfeeding, which was women and some men talking about their experiences of breastfeeding. So the idea behind this pilot was that we would use that data and reanalyze it and see if we could find clues about outcomes um, for systematic reviews. So Two researchers from this research group, um, uh, Health Experiences Research Group in Oxford, reanalyzed the data. Uh, they did it separately and then they compared notes. There were 51 interview transcripts to work with. They then produced a list of themes and these again were compared with the outcomes used in systematic reviews uh, for interventions for breastfeeding. So that was the, the, the sort of bare bones of the project. Three review groups, three different topics, and three different methods. So clearly the evaluation of this was going to be quite complex and interesting. So the main evaluation item we were after were what were the important outcomes from each of the pilots as defined by patients, the public, and practitioners. And we were then going to compare those with existing outcomes used by the review groups. And so the little chart on the right is actually the outcomes that are used by in asthma reviews by Cochrane Airways. And once we got our outcomes from the workshop, we superimposed those over the outcomes that they currently use routinely for their reviews. And we did a comparison. So that was the first item of evaluation that we were interested in. And the core purpose, I suppose, of the project. The second item of evaluation was um, what engagement activity did, did the review group get from each of the pilots? So we were looking at whether we were increasing levels of involvement, whether we were expanding their networks, whether we had people becoming interested in helping with systematic review production. And, and the answer to all of those was, was yes. Um, and then finally, we considered practical things. We were very interested in the costs of each of these pilots, which was the most expensive, which was the cheapest, and also what was needed to support the review groups to do this work. 
and was it feasible for review groups to use any of these methods going forward for their uh, consumer involvement and professional involvement in systematic review production? So my last but one slide is just going to highlight for you the key um, results from each of the pilots. So as I said, if we work again from left to right, so on the left hand column, you have a nice picture of some participants at the workshop with their permission. They're very happy for us to show you their faces. Um, they were about two thirds of the people participating had asthma or were parents. We had two young people with asthma participating and their parents came along and about a third were health professionals such as respiratory physicians and asthma nurses. Um, between them, they just described 69 different outcomes. And the way we managed that on the day was that we had already done our homework. So we looked at outcomes that the review group used. We'd also looked at the literature. There was a couple of really key pieces of information that we were able to use. And the Facebook survey, which I mentioned earlier, also gave us some hints. And we had those domains of outcomes, we put them up on the wall as people were writing and just discussing their own outcomes. And then we asked them to um, put their outcome where they felt it belonged. And what we established from that exercise, there were very clear popular outcome areas and they were around symptom management, quality of life, managing flare ups or exacerbations as we call them in the professional world and adherence to treatment. And the last one, adherence or asthma control, was the most interesting topic for discussion. And we ended up having quite a detailed discussion about that within the workshop. I'm pleased to say there were some overlaps uh, with the outcomes that were expressed at the workshop with those that are used in the reviews. And the review group felt that it, it sort of validated their approach, which was to use a mixture of outcomes, some very um, measurement focused and others more, sub, as they would say, subjective. Um, so that was the results of the first pilot. The second pilot, the one with the ENT group and the online survey, 235 people participated with that, uh, 155 practitioners and 80 people with sinusitis. And I think that reflected the challenge of reaching out to um, people with a condition where there is no um, intermediary organisation that we could legitimately go through. That survey generated 549 in-scope outcomes and there was a lot of repetition across the survey data which made the analysis of that relatively straightforward. The sort of big result of this pilot was that 73% of these um, outcomes that were described concerned symptoms they were either what's called sinonasal, which is relating to the condition or more general. And they were expressed equally by both patients and professionals and correlated strongly with what the review group was um, in terms of outcomes, but, but not as much as they would like. And I think the outcome from this pilot was that they're going to focus more on specific symptom um, outcome measurement for their reviews. Then the final pilot, which was the what's called secondary analysis of the data in Health Talk, there were 51 interview transcripts independently assessed by two researchers, and they generated 15 outcome themes. And in this pilot, it was much more difficult to map what came out of the exercise from the patient stories, if you like, with what was used in reviews. We had a workshop in Liverpool to discuss this data and compare it to what the review group were using. And it was a really interesting meeting, but it also showed how difficult it was to actually identify important outcomes in this particular pilot. The outcomes that were described by the um, people interviewed for Health Talk were much more diverse than the outcomes used in the reviews and concerned broader things such as relationships with breastfeeding support professionals whereas in the reviews there was more of an emphasis on how long women would be breastfeeding for for example so there was a lot of clear blue water between these two sets of outcomes which made it more difficult to identify important outcomes but it was a fascinating um, project 
Um, and I think we learned a lot from that workshop about how to talk about outcomes when they feel very different from a, a systematic review perspective um, and from a, um, a patient public and practitioner perspective. Um, the next slide then is some final um, information that you can go to, which I think um, uh, is uh, should be able you should be able to click on the links. There's a plain language summary of the ENT disorders pilot, and there's a link to that there. We're working on one for the asthma uh, pilot. There was a paper that was written from the ENT pilot, which actually writes up the process in much more detail, and there's a reference for it there. And I think Chris is going to put up um, the handout that we've been sharing with our sort of public and professional um, partners in this project. Um, are you able to do that, Chris? Uh, yeah, that's fine. I'll do that now for everybody. Thank you very much. So that we continue. Oh, sorry, sorry, Chris. No, thank you. Pardon. That'll just appear in um, in people's handouts down the side, but we'll also share that on the website. Great, thank you. Um, and we're in the process of still working on some of the outputs of this project um, in terms of um, presentations, workshops, and and uh, other other routes. So that's that's the end of my presentation.